Hello, in this lecture, we're gonna work on a master budget and we're gonna start off with the sales budget over here. We're gonna have our information on the left-hand side and then we're gonna enter that information into the blue area over here. Uh, the master budget can be a bit intimidating because of one, the amount of information that is given in a problem like this, and two, because of the amount of information we have to input can be very large. However, if we do it basically in chunks, step-by-step, step, and there is a step-by-step step process, in order uh, an order that we have to do it in basically starting of course with the sales budget also want to point out that we are going to do a master budget and we're thinking about manufacturing companies uh, and the reason for a manufacturing company type budget is often because it's the largest uh, type of budget we're gonna to have to think about because we have to think about purchasing and inventory so obviously if you were working on something if we had a budget for something that was not uh, a manufacturing company then we would still have a budget, but we would take out, of course, a lot of the, the manufacturing stuff, probably a more simplified type of budget. Okay, so the first thing, uh, we'll, what we'll have in our information is we want to know where we're at at a point in time, where the budget is going to be for. So we're going to be budgeting for, in this case, July, August, and September. So that'll be the third quarter. And the information we're generally going to need to budget looking forward is we're going to need what happened basically in the past, and we're going to need some general rules in terms of how we're going to budget so first we have what what happened in the past so that's going to of course be the balance sheet as of 6 30 so that's going to be our beginning numbers that we're going to start off with and then we're going to use those of course to budget to the future so the balance sheet's going to be over here and then a problem like this will generally have a lot of other miscellaneous information including things like uh, what we think our, our sales are going to be and, and our policies in terms of basically our collections and, and things like that. So we'll go through these things as we work through the problem as needed, talk about where they're generally gonna be in a problem as well as where we might get them in real life. So a budget's gonna have to start off with basically sales and that's because everything else is gonna be generated from that. We can't budget anything else until <laughs> we know uh, how much we're gonna, we're gonna receive in sales. So that has to be where we start and much of the sales budget's just gonna be given to you when the, within a problem. So down here in this problem, we have are July, August, and September. So we're taking July, August, and September. And note, a lot of times these problems will have basically a June and October type numbers in there because uh, we're gonna need those to make some of our estimates. So remember that we are working on the third quarter, July, August, and September, and we, we're gonna give data for before that time, possibly after that time, in order to help us with parts of the budget as we go. And so they're giving us basically the sales in units here. So remember, we sell things. We sell inventory if you want to make up some type of widget that we're selling <laughs> that's that's fine we're making something and selling it these are the number of units that we're going uh, to sell and we're going to sell them at 24 dollars so that's going to be given in the problem in real life of course we'd have to project that in some way and um uh, that would be part of the process of the budget but any kind of problem on it generally going to be given within the problem so 20,006, 19, uh, 6, and 20,001. So let's go up here. I'm just going to plug those numbers in here. 20,006, 196, and 20,001. Notice I'm not I'm not uh, putting a comma in there or anything. Of course, I'm formatted. The cells have been formatted already in terms of number format. Going to sum that up by saying equals SUM. And I'm just going to sum that up. The 26 plus the 196 plus the 20,001 is going to add up to a total of 60,003 for the third quarter. Now that's units, and we're going to talk about now the dollar amount, which will be 24. That's how much we uh, sell these for. Therefore, we're going to multiply this out now. So 20,006 units in July times $24 would be equals 20,006 times 24 and enter. Wait, I said that. You probably thought I was going to do that in my head there, but no, I was going to, we're going to do that here. <laughs> say this equals the 196 units that we're going to sell times the $24 that we sell them for, and that'll give us the uh, 47400 And then in September, we're gonna say this equals the 20,001 times the $24 that we sell them for. And so this is how many units we're gonna sell. And now we're gonna sum up the dollars sales that we believe that we're gonna have. So this is gonna equal the sum of. And notice, uh, sometimes I'll try to format that. We could format these in terms of, of dollars over here as well just so we can see the fact that uh, when we're separating units from dollars which can be a bit confusing in these types of problems 
All right, step two is to make the production budget. And uh, you might be thinking, well, uh, the production, how many units are we going to product? That produce, that's what the production budget is going to tell us. And you might be thinking, well, we already figured that out, right? We're going to, we're going to have uh, 60,003 in sales. We're, we're going to have to produce the, that many throughout the quarter. However, uh, note that uh, we might have some units on hand already and we might want to have a cushion basically to have some extra units in case uh, we sell more than we thought. We don't want to be short on the sales. So we're going to start off with uh, the budgeted units for each month. And of course, we've already calculated those numbers. Those numbers are going to equal the 20,006 for July. And then for August, we have the 196. I'm going to select tab to go to the next cell. And September is the 20,001. And that, so we're just bringing those numbers down. So, of course, this is how many we think we're going to sell. So that's what we're going to start off with in terms of how many do we think we're going to produce. Then we're going to, we're going to try to decide, basically, do we want an ending balance in the budget? Meaning, do we want to work into the budget that we'll have some added extra leftover units after we sell our 20,006 in inventory just in case our sales are greater than that? So how would we come up with that number? We're going to have to scroll down and see that will generally be given within the data. And this should be kind of like a policy that we'll have within the company saying how much do we do we want in the ending inventory. And in this problem, it says that ending finished goods uh, percent of next month's uh, expected unit sales. So what that means is basically we want to predict, predict next month's unit sales and have a, an ending finished goods inventory equal to 80% of next month's. So that's how much kind of cushion we want as of the end of the month in case sales are higher than we expected them to be. And so that's a pretty large uh, variable. So we're going to say then that uh, next month, we can think that we're going to start with next month's budgeted sales for July. So for July, then we're thinking about uh, August's sales.